I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. Hey, we're here post Gen Con in Kickstarter land. Yay, Gen Con is awesome, but I'm tired. <laughs> I think I'm getting sick, too. Apparently, Kickstarter is tired, too. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is not the best time, I think, to launch something on Kickstarter. Post Gen Con? During Gen Con. I mean, really, I mean, some people do. Well, probably of a lot of folks who whipped back these games went to Gen Con, A, and B, spent a lot of money at Gen Con. So, right now, it's sort of, you Your know. Your budget's low, right? Low. Yeah, yeah. It's recoup time, the recoup recuperate time or recharge time, so. I think I only have 13 that we're looking at, and I was kind of <coughs> dredging up a few of these here, so. <laughs> I. I don't know if we have any crossovers I'd pick of the week, but it's it more likely to happen. That's the funny part, because there's fewer choices. True. Sure. Well, but fewer choices. We're still doing it. Here we go. All right. So first of all, again, if you're watching this, we only look at Kickstarters that are ending in the next 15 days or so. Because in two weeks, we do the show again. So you're like, why didn't they mention this game that just came out today? Because we'll get that in the next show. Right. So first, we have Materia Prima. Is it Prima? Prima, Prima was right. The Prima, the Alchemist Guild, another sandbox-style game. with not. I like the art for the game fine. Uh, I'm a little concerned when I look at the game layout. It looks a little like the graphic designers, not, like the artist is there, but the graphic designer is not. Well, I think it's the same person. I think it's a. Uh, it it read especially near to towards the bottom of the project here, like the person uh, who did the game, maybe did the artwork and the layout and so forth. Maybe I'm wrong, but it definitely is a small project. It sounded like a single person was involved. I think the art's great. I'm not sold on the graphic design. Sure, sure. It looks a little bit busy. It seems like a lot of game, to be honest. Uh, you know, once I got to the dice, I was finally like, ooh, okay. Because everything else looked a little busy, and it, it does. Mm -hmm. Once I got to the dice, I was like, oh, there's even dice chucking in this? That might liven it up a little bit. Got it. These tiles and stuff, they almost <laughs> look like uh, Richard Brees' Keithedral type mm -hmm. games. Doesn't Very it have that same there, color yep. palette? And stuff. So I don't know. It sounds interesting, you know. Get elements and get these better things and stuff. It, it, it's kind of using that same old. You're a wizard and doing stuff. I wonder yeah. if the, those standees are going to make it difficult for the board because it looks like the board has some stuff on it that you need to see. Yeah. As far as spaces are concerned, and I'm and it looks like there's some icons on the board as well, or are those tokens that have been placed there. Even still. Those standees are gonna block. That's the only. That's one of the things that I was worried about. Yeah, even the overview looks busy. Even just that one still photo. Yeah. There's a lot going on, but I'm I'm hoping it's good. You know, it oh, looks. Yeah, of course. You always it's hope. something. No, I don't always hope. I. I <laughs> Sometimes I get whatever. It looks. It, it looks very. Um, this normally I use this in a negative connotation, but I mean it positively here. It looks like a very much like a Kickstarter game. Like, it's, it makes sense for this to be on Kickstarter. It's mm -hmm. some guy had an idea, put a lot of time and effort into it, and is trying to get it funded. Oh, like he's that. from Bavaria, the guys, and he designed and produced it himself. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. All right. Next one is Gatefall Chapter 1, Fantasy versus Post-Apocalyptic. Post-Apocalyptic, you say? No. Automatic perk <laughs> of the week. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. It says Post-Apocalyptic <laughs> on it. I called it. Really? This feels like they're like, hey, what can we put in the game? How about everything? <laughs> Expansion Pick. one's going to be science fiction You know that some of your favorite games have, like, everything. Shut up! All right. I know, I know. It looks all right. I, 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 it's slim pickings, Wait, okay? it looks all right. It's a very it's slim pickings kind of week for me. Yeah. Uh, I like the minis. They look neat. The game looks simple. It kind of verged on simplistic for me, but as I went through the rest of them and came back to this, I thought, you know what, of everything that's on display here, this is the one I would most want to play of what's available. That Wait, I, they said that the 
Chapter two is sci-fi versus 80 zombies. I 80 was not zombies. I was wow. not wrong. But here, check it out though. Peanut this butter. is where I was like, whoa. Oh, the jar of peanut butter? The jar. Look at the <laughs> size of those things. It might man. be t- it might be a tiny jar of peanut butter. No. No, sir. it's not. I don't not not when you use it for size comparison and then you don't say this is a small size. Yeah, and plus they have plus normal they have minis the, there. They have the, the 40k mini there as well. They are definitely putting their eggs in one basket here. I want to be this Brog guy. I'm going to call him peanut butter from now on because <laughs> apparently that's how big he is. He's cool. Yeah. Hopefully the minis turn out to be. Hopefully they turn out to be good quality though. That comes. That doesn't look too far from Gimli. Like they look oh, Gimli and they took. Well, duh. Look at look at the next one. I, Randar oh, instead yeah. of Gandalf. I mean, Firebug. come on. They're just replacing letters at this point, and then they get to the post-apocalyptic stuff and. Okay, now they're a little bit different. This guy's name is Piggy. Well, the Lost Boy is very a Mad Max. Right, yeah, absolutely. But it looks neat. It's some sort of I don't of like hand. the way the board looks. It looks very... No, it looks very that's, basic. That's what I mean there by they're putting all their eggs in one basket yeah, here. Yeah, it's a they're, miniatures game. They are definitely touting the miniatures on this. Uh, but, I mean, uh, hopefully they use the right kind of material to where the miniatures are going to be good. Um... Yeah, yeah. But I like the aesthetic. I like the look of the cards. Yeah, yeah. The look of the minis. Mm-hmm. But you're right, the board looks really simplistic. Um, still, I like the vibe on display here. I'm a little concerned about this uh, designer's other games. Yeah. Their only other games are Super Fight. <coughs> mm-hmm. uh, That's a party game. Th- it's basically a bunch of party games. Yeah. So this is their 10th project, though. Right, and the rest of them are basically party games. I think. Pretty sure. Let's check it out. The last burrito on Earth. We're fighting to the death. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that burrito! Is so, it even going to be edible at that point? Yeah, you're right. You're right. These are all party games. Super fight and all that stuff. Right. So that's my main concern. I'm really rooting for you here. Yeah. I hope it's a good game. But still, my pick of the week. Because, yeah, it looks neat. Mm-hmm. All right. Goons. Now, this one did not make a lot of money, <laughs> but I but I really enjoyed the name of it. Sorry, I thought it was the funny. The aesthetic is neat. Yeah, it's not bad, right? It's well, I mean, I I won. I like the art style. That guy has been using a little too much blood. I agree. Thank you. This Brian. then once I got to this picture, I was like, what is that? Thank you, Brian Whipple. We appreciate it. He's going to get on a roller coaster. He can't watch now. Oh. But thank you. <laughs> Thanks for getting off the roller coaster in motion and onto a real one. Oh. Yeah, but that's way too busy. Well, it's not only too busy, it doesn't feel like it fits the theme. Not even close. That central thing is weird. I'm probably like, okay, you like that, probably. but I like it in a different game. Mobsters and goons. Okay, this is cool. And then you get to that board and you're like... Huh? It looks okay without the cubes on it. Once you yeah, put the cubes what on, is it looks that about? It's a cube collecting sort of. What I don't know what's happening in the center of that board. Nah, uh, it's probably some kind of like area control. I want those little deluxe poker chips. Maybe though. it's like area connect. Maybe or something people like clash that. or something. There's a little fighting. I don't no. know. That really pushed it me look out. Really weird. It looks Me's better too. close up. I, I beg to differ. When you put those cubes down, never beg. isn't that like a 3D render though? Sure. When you put cubes down, they ain't gonna stay that nice and neat and no, organized. That's, that's the what thing. I'm talking Out about. Of Sam's around. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, <laughs> dice bags from beyond. Woo! This is one of those ones that put on the thing because we were running out of projects. Yeah. They're not horrible dice bags, but again. He's getting pretty close to copyright infringement there. You can get dice bags almost anywhere. That's true. Why do I need to back a Kickstarter? They're not that expensive, though. They're 26 for three of them. It's not too bad. No, I'm not saying it's expensive. That's fine, but I mean, you know. They look all right. I don't dislike them. I hope hope they're really good quality. They look neat. Yeah. Smartphone! (laughs) Ink. Never heard of it. So smartphone here is... um, it's Dice Tower Essential, so there's that, and it's doing really well. 3,000 backers. This is a reprint of Smartphone. It's essentially the same game. The only difference is that they are adding a bunch of extra stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you come down here to the bottom, uh, where is it? The different technologies, basically stretch goals. Everything looks very similar. The only, I feel like I'm scrolling forever here. Here, new technology tiles. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So cool. they've unlocked the whole pile of these technology tiles. You use five different technologies the game had, I think five or six, I can't remember now, um, and then you can flip them over, so 12 combinations or something. There's not that many <coughs> combinations, but now there will be more. Okay. With That's more cool. technology. I like the look of this Kickstarter. It very much resemb- resembles the look of the game, which is this really clean, white palette, you know. Um, I haven't played it yet, but it looks neat. Yeah, I know. Uh, Are we usually hardwired in? Is that why it's different? No, no, no. It's glitching a bunch. Yeah. Oh, so this is the thing that's glitching. Yeah, plug so. it in, plug it in. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I made it brighter. Anyway, this is not my pick of the week because I'm invested in this one and I thought that would be kind of overdoing it. So yes. this is a Dice Tower Essential game coming from Arcane Wonders. Cool, cool. I really like it. And uh, yeah, it probably would have been my pick of the week. We- pick of the week. Pick, pick of, of the, the week. week. Peak of the week. Anyhow. Huh? Peak of the week. Trude Vang Legends from Kaman Games. Vang. Is it Trude Vang? Yeah. 1.15 1. <clears> million, <throat> 10,000 backers. Tons of miniatures, tons of stories. Look at that dude's horns. This is my pick of the week. Are those your horns? Those are nice. I horns. know that I tend to like come on games, although like I didn't pick their last one, which was the Bloodborne Miniatures games. It's interesting, but this one looks more my style because it has this big story aspect behind it. Now, okay. honestly, I haven't really put a lot of effort into figuring out how this game plays because I kind of want to be surprised when it comes out. I'll tell you everything I know if you want. Okay. So it's a story-driven thing in which the board has these plastic pockets right on the board. Yep. And you slide cards into that as you discover locations. Yeah. And they stick around from game to game. Yep. So it's like a sticker that isn't isn't permanent, which is a really nice solution, I think. Yes. The other thing, I got kind of a quick overview. It's very story driven again. There's a lot of, it's going to have a lot of content, I think. And I liked all of that. The thing that I was a little bit, that I, I sort of sat back again, I was like, okay, I don't know about this, was the uh, combat in it. Is this token pull from a bag type of combat or action taking? Right. And that seemed a little. Do people really slower. like that token pull from a bag thing? Well, there are whole games that are about bag sure. building, right? So this is kind of using that system a little bit. I just like chuck and dice. It's faster. It's more vis- visceral. That's true. You know? That's the one. That's the one part of this game. The one part of this game that I'm uh, iffy Not about. Sure about yeah. Iffy about, but this is my pick of the week. <clears throat> it looks good, man. I knew like, this was your pick. I was like, wait, what are you waiting for, Sam? Come on. <laughs> There's Vikingesque vibes here. You gotta oh, pick yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's what this is all about. The other about. game this had post apocalyptic things. I gotta pick it. <laughs> uh, we're nothing if not shallow. These are cool miniatures, and I'm a big fan of monster <laughs> miniatures that are not necessarily gross like, like the others. Oh, he's low do hada. Have you seen him from the back? That mini from the back is. I don't want to. He ain't right. He's fighting. Uh, quick note here: if we, huh? there's a big thunderstorm in the background, so if we go out, that's why. Yes. Yeah, we're we're hearing it and feeling it. So yeah, yeah. The lights already flickered once. Yeah, I've yeah. I've really wanted to play this. Yeah, I think it's I think it's been a year and a half at this point since you've heard about since it. Since I've seen the first prototype of it, and I've been wanting to play, and I haven't been able to play it. Just the two haven't yeah. lined up, and I've really been wanting to. They just haven't been able to. So sure, I'm really it's on Kickstarter, though. The, the thing about the Come On games is they're on Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, that's cool, but i got to put them out of my mind. Yep. Because I think I was telling Kenny today, I think we're like four projects out at this point. No, I still wake so, up every now and then like, <gasps> Death May Die. It's not out yet. I think Starcadia Quest is the next, right? Starcadia Quest one we're looking forward to. Yes. Project Elite. Death May Die has not, it's they released a big miniature so for it, right? Weird. I think some people got that massive toy. This is one of the only games that they've, they're coming out uh, with that I'm interested in that I haven't played. Because I've played Death May Die. I've played, um, what's the other one you were just talking about? Project Elite. We played Gen Con last year, I think. Um, you definitely played Project Elite because I was there. I played Project Elite. So I've, I've, Did you play I've, the Bloodborne miniature game? Yes. Really? And I've also played um, the uh, God of War card game. I've played all of these games. This is the one that's eluding me. Yeah, but I don't know if I might be glad that this Fine. one we wait till when it comes yeah, out. Sure. That's like a surprise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So very similar. <clears throat> Meow. A party game for 3 to 12 players, which is based on the game. Mao. Meow. Or is it Mao? Mao. Have you ever played Mao? Mao. 
You would hate Mao if you've been. No. <laughs> Mao is like an activity. Mao is like game. a game where the, the, someone is, makes up a rule, and yeah, if you break you it, know it, you, you know, have to do it. It's stupid. It's that's really, this, really. You look at these cards, and it's. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of jumping into this. It's stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say it's a mark. You must make robot noises. Oh, it's like Z's. You must. <laughs> you must name a country that no one has named yet. Cambodia. <laughs> Beep boop beep. <laughs> Come down, beep beep. I'm sorry. This just this is definitely for a certain group of people. It is, and, and those I am people not one of those say it. No, don't say no, that. Don't say that. I'm not Be going nice. to because this Be nice, is Sam. not. This is not 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 for me. This is your pick of the week. If we had a not our pick for the week, we could, we'll make one of those. Definitely not pick of the week from Tom Bassall. Super cute. I like the artwork. Yeah, but, but this no, is way sillier yes. actually than those. Um, Games from the Cyanide and Happiness people, whatever that's called. Oatmeal? Yeah, the oatmeal. No, not oatmeal, but they're, they're two different companies, but yes. Whatever, those like Exploding Kittens and the one they've got on Kickstarter mm-hmm. that just ended, I think. The trolley car one? Yeah, the trolley things. Those are yeah. party games. They're dumb, right? I get it. This is way sillier and sort of less um, engaging, in my opinion, than those games. This one just makes you do dumb stuff. It's making 19 grand, though. That's what blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sure, cute. but it is it's making adorable, nineteen grand man. opposed to like the half million some of these party games make. Sure, I get that. I get that. I want right. that kitty cat. Now, now the yeah, other, no, the, the artwork is great. I just, I just don't have the time for this kind of game. That's all. Well, the other end of the scale of complexity or seriousness, this shaz- shazen, shazen, shazen. This is a game about politics, but they're taking it fairly seriously. Yeah. Uh, now, I know that the the guys on our channel talked about this one. This one looks like a heavier style game. Right. And when I first saw this, I, was, I, I wasn't sold on this whole... I like elections and things like that a lot. This looks abstracted enough from reality. Oh, I don't mind that. But well put together enough that it seems like a really solid project. It seems classy. I like the look a lot. If the uh, theme was honestly anything else, I this might have been my pick of the week. I don't know if it's... That detached from reality. I think it's a lot. I think there's a lot of tongue in cheek. Well, they have the you U.S. and so? India campaigns. Yeah. Some of the stuff I read in it. I was actually, oh, okay. I was actually more interested when it, like these expansions, actually had me less interested. Because they're real, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to play USA 2020 with somebody who's no. like really into politics? No. It looks. I mean, I liked the look of it. See, look at these. Look at these things. Read, read some of these things, and it's like yeah, they're still kind of. No, nah, come on. That is that uh, is absolutely not uh, a non coincidence. No, I'm. You know, but I'm saying I don't know that they're necessarily based on exact people. I think they're taking ideas and such. Sure. I don't care whatsoever because it's politically themed. So right. I just I'm, I would never play a game about that. So. Uh, well, I mean, thoroughly it, just, it takes itself me. really seriously. You just played one like, two weeks ago, the gerrymandering game. That was about oh, as on. political just, as I'm interested yeah, in. Yeah, that's that's. And no, it was basically that's... through the politics, is what that was. <laughs> <laughs> that's a through the, the that's a through the desert. <laughs> joke, right. By the way, people. BattleTech Clan Invasion. Apparently, BattleTech still popular because yes. this one's doing really well. Yeah, man. Very close to my pick of the week, but I decided to go with Trude Vong. For obvious reasons. One thing I find fascinating about Battletech is they keep changing, they keep moving the storyline along. So in Battletech, there was, you know, this main storyline, and then they jumped 20 years in the future, okay. and then they jumped more and more in the future, and they keep jumping more in the future, and yet they keep going back to this one storyline, the clan invasion. Mm-hmm. I think that's their most popular storyline. Okay. But you actually know some of the story here, like the the lore. Oh, I've read many, many books based on, on Battletech, yeah. Battletech is made up of, it's a kind of a Game of Thrones-esque type thing where there's five major houses, maybe six, depends on what time frame you're in, that are fighting, and then these clans come in that are way more powerful than any, and they're just whooping up, so they all have to band together. Mm-hmm. And, but they band together through, and robots. still stabbing each other in the back, and any chance they can get, stuff like that. But it, also robots, right? No, they're battle battle techs. The, the mechs are awesome. I've always liked no, battle tech. No, they're suits. I've they're always liked battle tech what? better. <laughs> I've always liked battle techs. The mechs <laughs> and battle tech better than almost anything else. I like them better than Gundam. I like them better than Transformers. I like them better than Robotech. This is my 
jam when it comes to the mechs. That was extra geeky, man. Pick of the week? Good job. No, I already picked my pick of the week. You read the books. Well, Where are the books? Trudvang, same as you. Oh, really? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. I didn't hear him say it either. I said it he first. Said, he said I it right away. Um, paying attention, I guess. I had a joke and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Gridopolis. I actually have this game sitting in my house. I have not yet uh, messed with it yet. looks cool to me. It looks really cute. It, like, it looks like a toy, though, that you play oh, with, sure, right? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, absolutely. For kids. Um, and that guy really likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Build, move, modify. Now, yeah, I don't know if the game is any good, right? It, I've been looking at it. It looks like a fun thing for kids to play with put together, but it also looks limiting. If you're looking at it as a building, there's only so many things you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't Legos or Constructs or Tinker Toys. This is Connects. Gridopolis. On the rocks. Are not mechs. Sorry. Whatever. I meant robotic things. It's not, whatever. I'm just comparing them all to each other. I'm not saying they're all I the was same. Answering then. Oh. On the Rocks, a marble drafting cocktail recipe fulfillment game. This one actually looks interesting to me, and I hope it funds. Doesn't I don't know if it will or not at this point in time. Looks but I like good. the boards. I like the whole putting the marbles in. It looks like a in, more interesting theme. The aesthetics look really good. The graphic design looks good. Mm -hmm. These are very similar to the drinks I drink, except they're mostly they're not water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this looks they neat. It kind of looks the like the game. Marvel game. Obviously, what? it looks like Potion. Neo, the board game. <laughs> it kind of looks like Potion Explosion a little bit. Yeah. And then you're drafting those marbles out of the bins, which is kind of like Azul. You know, you're doing that. Yeah, that's 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 the thing that kind of got me worried about it is the fact that a lot of the descriptions on this, it's like it's like this game, it's like this game. And so yeah, but why? they they aren't saying that though. Oh, a lot of some of the people that they're quoting are saying that. Oh, I see, I see. When yeah, that's not that's not the kind of thing you want to have your quote, right? Right. I mean, I mean they're they're saying it in nice ways, of course, but um, I do like those lemon round marker tokens. <laughs> yeah, it's neat. Yeah, I have to say, though, whoever did the graphic, I, I complain about great, graphic yeah. design a lot. This is one I like. Yes. How it comes across. It looks really clean, yep. easy to figure out. Yep. Very thematic. And I don't drink, and yet I know more about drink recipes from some of these games than. <laughs> All right, two more. Import Export Definitive Edition. So if you haven't heard of Import Export, the original one, it is very much a, hey, Glory to Rome is out of print. We're going to make something like it. Mm. It's very similar to that game. Uh, the, where you play a card and everyone else can do the action on that card and s depending on the cards you play. And it's all about importing and exporting goods, these big giant container ships that you can see here have cubes. This one is obviously a more upgraded version of the original game. I don't think people are this, I'm not sold on where each box is different and you get a random color. Would you, would you like that? Not really, but I don't... Okay. That five I would boxing. Care. I would care because if I can pick it, yeah. But the completionist is going to go nuts if it's. Random. I'm not saying you have the to have all different of them. choices like this. Is oh. that this is only cool? Having twelve different covers is only neat if, if I have. can pick my cover. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not interesting to right. me. Otherwise, the one I get might as well be every cover. <clears throat> like for example, here the yellow one for me doesn't look as good as the other ones. You're insane. I think the red one looks the best. The so, red one does look the best. The red one, so that red or black or whatever, those, if I want that color, maybe you, maybe there's a pledge where you can pick your color. Nope. And then they got a random country sticker put on. So I guess there's that whole, hey, every game is essentially different. Yeah. And it is neat when you play the game, it's hard to see from these pictures, but it shows you like the top down of the container and it tells you what's inside it. Hey, I got a container here of can openers. That's the old one, that's the new one. They've upgraded cards and such. I thought the game was okay. I thought it was more work than it was fun, if that makes sense. It was a little slower than I would like, but I know a lot of people really like it. They didn't quote me on here for whatever reason. Hmm, I wonder why. I don't get it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> last one, Adventure Tactics, a co-op tactics campaign for one to five players. This one is doing pretty well. Um, has. It is. Looks like a Saturday, well, I can't even say Saturday morning cartoon, that's not a thing anymore. Looks like a Netflix cartoon brought to, I don't know if this yeah. actually is based on a cartoon, is it? I don't know. Uh, it might as well be Fantasy Fight, the fantasy fighting game. For me, I'm just, that's how it looks. 
Now, I'm, it's very generic here. Hey, you want to be a cleric, wizard. Someday, do you think like you you will not make as much money if you like try to change up the names of classes and they're the same thing? Yes. Which would you rather though? Would you rather it be called rogue wizard, or would you rather be you know like, you know Steve? I can't even think of a good fake name now. But like instead of okay hunter, would you rather hunter instead of ranger? Like some like a name that's kind of similar. And it's the exact same thing, but it's just okay, a different hunter name. Instead of ranger, is his first name ranger? No, I'm Ranger confused. is a class. Yeah, so I don't get what you're saying. So instead of calling him, the, instead of saying warrior, this is a mush kebab or whatever it's called in that. Mush in that kebab. See, I knew you would get caught up it's in the word I use. Give him a name. Like, again, the, the devil's in the details when it comes to this stuff. If you want to put me in that world and give that guy a story and give him a name. Okay. It can be like Earl Blackabluki, the fighter. Blackabluki. You know what I mean? It's just the fact no, that no, it's no, like they have wizard. Names. No, they have names. Oh, Jesus. Oh, but the... come on, really? Okay. <clears throat> I'm, but I'm saying, would you rather the class names, which is what I'm talking about, be generic but accurate, or would you rather them just be called something else? I'd rather they be called like something else. Like a spell finder instead of a wizard. You know what I mean? Something That's like fine. that. That's fine. That's better. Yeah, sure. Why not? Put some work into it. It's all the same garbage. I mean, after a while, this game looks so generic to me. It look, does. It like looks very more, cartoony, though. It's like though. the same stuff. I like the look, okay? Don't get me wrong. If this was a cartoon, I might even put it on. It looks cute. I just don't want to play another game in which we're in another dungeon doing some more spell slinging of fireballs. Yes, but I'm hoping that this is good for kids. And I'm hoping... I'm not even going to say <laughs> I don't I'm know what you're... No, don't, this, this might be a good dungeon crawl for kids. It Maybe. all looks very kitty. Yeah. I'm cool with that. But I like that idea. But we already Quest. Nah, it's not quite the same. This is, Arcade Quest is not co-op, even remotely. True. So, alrighty. Well, that's what we have for you to look at this week. Let's jump to some contributors, and here they come. Yeah. Hey, folks. Welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview Recap. I'm Mark. I'm Eric Summerer. How's it going? Guess what? Guess where we are? Uh, oh, Eric's here, so we must be at Gen, Gen Con. Con. Hey, uh, Mark. Uh, we've been at Gen Con, so I haven't yes. really been paying attention to what you've been doing lately. So Ooh. could you do, uh, like a recap? Ooh, let's do that. First up, we've got We're Doomed. The world is doomed. And you, along with your fellow world leaders, have to work together in order to complete this escape rocket. However, there's not a lot of time. You have 15 minutes to complete this build and get off this doomed planet. Which means there may not be enough resources and enough seats for everyone to escape. Some tough choices will have to be made and only the most influential of governments will survive. You are working together with other world leaders to build seats on a rocket and escape our planet before it explodes. And you only have 15 minutes to do this. With this incredible sand timer, it's really neat. But you have to work together in order to build enough seats get off. However, if there's not enough seats, then you have to hope to be one of the world leaders that has enough favor to escape and get one of those seats. However, there are events along the way that could totally change the landscape. Next up, we have Swituations. Swituations is a party game. And again, party games are all about what you put in is what you can get out of it. So you're going to be writing phrases, hoping others contribute other phrases to the deck of cards and trying to gain points by the most humorous phrase that is chosen. Next up, we have Dice Throne Adventures. You and your team of battle-hardened heroes have gathered, ready to set off across Crimson Sands to find and defeat the Mad King. But beware, you are not the first to travel this path. Many have tried before, and an army of loyal minions, as well as previously defeated heroes, who chose eternal servitude over death, are ready to lay down their lives to end yours. You are certainly not yet strong enough for the final showdown, so you will need to gather loot and upgrade your abilities along the way. When the time comes, will you be ready to take the throne? Dice Storm Adventures is the battle card game, but now in a cooperative experience. It's a dungeon crawl. You're moving through the dungeon together to fight the boss and all his minions. 
and along the way you're gonna be getting all kinds of loot and gear to add to your character and there's these amazing loot drops and how all those mechanics work together and the battle mechanics are still here as you fight so this was definitely one to check out next up we have of war and men of war and men is set during world war ii you will control a fire team of soldiers trying to achieve a central goal these goals can be wide and varied however you will have to deal with rugged terrain and all kinds of enemy soldiers all in an effort really to withstand the trials and tribulations of war your ultimate goal is to have your soldiers survive so this was a unique preview where I got to sit down with the designer and do a little Q&A and give us a kind of a heads up about the game. But this is a card game that is a war game and you can make it as light as you want or as complex as you want. And what's really neat is that all the soldiers are unique and have unique abilities and powers and failings. So definitely one to check out. All right, so my pick this week is absolutely 100% Dice Throne Adventures. I had so much fun with this game. All the elements of this game and how it has that Diablo-esque feel to it really, really appeals to me. And the presentation is beautiful. All the season one characters, now in the season two look, boom, I'm in. All right, folks, if you want any more information about the games that I mentioned here, please go check out my full previews. And if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, We'll see you at the table. Sister Meeple here, bringing you my five most anticipated games launching on Kickstarter in the next two weeks. Now pardon me while I pause to wipe the egg off my face. I thought Ryan Lockett's Sleeping Gods Kickstarter was launching on the 8th of August, and it actually launched yesterday on the 6th. So my apologies, Ryan, and I'm sneaking Sleeping Gods in today even though it just launched. Sleeping Gods was inspired by Homer's Odyssey, and it depicts a ship and its crew in an epic voyage to return home. It is a cooperative, survival, repeatable, campaign, atlas, storybook game. Can one designer manage to successfully pull off all of these elements in a single game? If anyone can do it, it'll be Ryan Lockett. August 9th. Have you ever sat and thought to yourself, my tiny epic galaxies game is just too big? If so, never fear, Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies is launching on August 9th. The entire game, including the satellites and super weapons mini expansion, will fit into a box the size of a deck of playing cards. Gameplay is pretty much identical to the original, so if you like the original and you're looking for something ultra portable, this may be the game for you. August 12th. Also following the mini game trend, Dr. Finn will be adding to his popular Cosmic Run line of games with Cosmic Run Express. Consisting of only 25 cards, some rectangular and some hexagonal, players win this game by being the first to reach three planets. This campaign will only run for one week, so if you are interested, be careful not to miss it. August 13th. I've mentioned Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels before. It's up for a relaunch on August 13th with a new, less expensive standee option. I think the Shovel Knight miniatures are great, especially when they are professionally painted, but if you are looking for a bargain, the standees are also nice, and I do hope the campaign sees success. August 15th, Burgle Brothers 2, The Casino Capers, will be a standalone sequel to the popular heist game by Tim Fowers. Much of the gameplay is yet a mystery. One early playtester has mentioned that players' characters may have individual decks of cards to complement their unique abilities. That's it for this week. If I've missed your favorite upcoming Kickstarter, please do post it in the comments below. Hey folks, and welcome to FOMO, the series where I take a look at a game that's currently crowdfunding and maybe I have a fear of missing out on it, maybe you do too, and we'll go ahead and take a look together and decide. Now today, I'm taking a look at an expansion for an already popular game that will dramatically change it. We're going to be rolling dice, exploring a dungeon, defeating monsters, and building up to the final showdown with the boss. Today, we're taking a look at Dice Throne Adventures. Now there is way too much to cover in this limited time as far as the rules, so I'm just going to touch on the few things that really drew me into this one. If you need a more thorough look, I suggest taking a look at either Mark Street's Dice Tower Preview or any of the other playthroughs out there. Now this expansion changes the core game from a competitive one to a cooperative adventure game. This right from the start had me excited. Dice Throne is already a great game, but adding a dungeon crawl element to this working together not only brought something I didn't even know I wanted, 
but also was just a natural fit for the Dice Throne series and the lore. As players move through the dungeon, they'll be flipping over dungeon tiles, discovering new locations, and applying the effects printed on those tiles. And what I really enjoyed here was the element of the unknown. Tiles are only flipped over as players enter them, and for me, this is something I always appreciate in a dungeon crawl. The tiles might bring monsters into play or even give loot, which I love can range from common to legendary. One thing I also loved here is that the loot can also sometimes need to be identified at the shopkeeper later, so you keep them face down and unknown until you can actually get to the shop. Looking at the bosses, I really enjoyed how they increase in power as you explore the dungeon. They're already incredibly powerful enemies, but not knowing just how powerful they will be by the time you reach them was something I just loved. Players will be wanting to explore the dungeon, but doing so too much results in a more powerful boss at the end. I also enjoyed the fact that even in defeat, players can still grow more powerful through loot and buying items with gold to try again. In that, this feels a lot more like playing an RPG in that you can elect to just grind and essentially level up before taking on the boss. Players can even choose to elect to flee from a dungeon and with what they've collected and spend their gold and then come back to the dungeon. The game also has a legacy type component and that allows players to upgrade cards from the original decks as they progress through. Now as to what I didn't like, there really isn't a lot here. This really does take the Dice Throne game already loved and just adds a whole new way to play it. However, I will say that for those who haven't played Dice Throne before trying to move right into Dice Throne Adventures, you're going to feel overwhelmed. I definitely think that anyone playing this should have at least played the core season one or two first at least once. Also, be aware this game is going to eat up your table space. Not really a negative for most people, though. Additionally, while I didn't see it happen, player elimination during a game can happen, and that can be an issue for some gamers. So my final thoughts on this is that if you already love Dice Throne, you probably already have FOMO on this, and you're probably already a backer. If you've never played Dice Throne before due to not be interested in a competitive game, this might be the thing that pushes you into it. For me, this just feels like a great dungeon crawl that captures, oddly enough, a lot of the elements of a video game RPG that I put on my table and I immediately want to play right after playing. If this game interests you, then go check out their campaign page quickly as it is ending very soon. And I look forward to seeing you folks next episode. This episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. Whoa! All right, quick topic today, playmats. Now, playmats are pretty, that's for sure. I don't even remember what the first game I saw with a playmat was. Monopoly came out with a playmat back in <laughs> 1936. That was a blanket. Oh, you're right. That's true, it probably was. <laughs> um, but anyhow, playmats, they were a rare thing even a few years ago. Yes, absolutely. Now... A good chunk of Kickstarters Everybody come with playmats. When I was at Gen Con, many places I'd say, oh, there's the game. They're like, oh, also, we got a playmat for it. It's an extra 30 bucks. Why not? It's a stretch goal that makes sense, or an add-on, I guess I should yeah. say. That sure. Well, sense. here's the thing. The problem with playmats is, is that they very rarely fit in the box. I don't think I've ever seen one that does fit. Uh, Marvel mm -hmm. Legendary Villains Only time was a long box. Yeah, but Marvel Legendary. Well, it's a really tiny. <laughs> it's a really oh, tiny. That one is the board. Point. There is no board. That is the board. Yeah, it's there a is no board. True, okay. but it's still a playmat. I think a playmat is like an extra accessory. I mean, I, it depends on what, you're, what we're talking about today. I think because some games you play on like a cloth surface. All right, yeah, let's talk about those first. So, right, ma the Magic the Gathering playmat started this, right? You didn't need to play probably, on anything. Yeah, right, right. But there's a lot of games that come with a playmat, and it's just a picture. It's nothing. Has nothing to do with the board. Mm -hmm. Those, personally, I never use. No. Although I will say that That's the like extra... game topper ones are really beautiful. That's just a surface for your table. Sure. You know, right? I mean, yeah, when I'm thinking of play mats, I'm get, I, my mind is going to you're backing a game or you buy a game from a booth or something, and then as an extra thing, you may buy a play mat to play on that surface instead of the board that's included in the game. 
or maybe even it's a card game. And there is no where board. Where they just tell you this deck goes here and this set the game up as you would any other card game. Or buy the play mat and there's little outlines for where stuff could go. Yeah. I will say that I'm almost more always tempted to get those. Always. You like that? In a card a game, setup. especially if there's piles everywhere, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to have that mat. Star Realms is one that really benefited from, benefited from this because it was just really bland. Just piles of of cards mm -hmm. but when you have that play mat underneath it yeah sure it only has the outlines for it it looks a lot better mm -hmm. it doesn't really provide any extra function but it looks better right i like it when play mats are able to do that and give you a little extra usability like i know some games expect you to keep track of victory points or life with counters but a play mat We'll give you a little track down the side where you can put a couple of cubes or something yeah, on there. Boom, cool. boom, track your life. Oh, we did um, it like Dice Masters. Mm -hmm. Keep track of my life on that yeah. rather than some other way. I like yep. that. Uh, I like when play mats give you the same thing but a larger surface upon which to play. That's nice. Mm -hmm. However, Champions Midgard, baby, that's a great right, play mat. And they combined things into a single play mat. However, it all keeps coming back to you need to store this thing on its own. Which honestly is the biggest detriment for me when it comes to deciding whether I want to play a mat or not. Well, even, for example, this exact play mat, which is for a game we haven't reviewed yet. Um, I don't even know what the game is. And the thing is, it's not with the game. Right. Because we just have a pile of play mats up there. Yep. And so you can't put it with the game because the games are all stacked in the shelf. Well, you could, but then it's a pain. Right, right. When I keep a game, so the way we do it for Dice Tower Libraries, we put a sticker that says play mat available for this game on the box and then just leave the play mats and you can use them or not. Yeah. Um, probably most people don't want to sticker their game saying that. Don't forget the play mat. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I know that I really like them. They don't get bent. They don't get creased. They look great on the table. They, you, they feel good. Their cards pick up off them easily. They can become creased. And you're not supposed to fold them. Well, you're not supposed to fold them. The two right. ways I heard of storing them is the one way I did it with the pants hangers. Yeah, you're just hang hanging them close. Some people the have put them in wine racks. Yeah. Sure, yeah, right. Where you can right. roll them up, put them in there. That's not a bad idea either, but again, you still have to match it with the right game. Yeah. So You could definitely see, just from a usability point of view, where you could have a game where on the inside of the lid you Rook put a Don sticker. Of Kiev. That's the play mat. Oh, this is Rook Don of Kiev. I knew yeah, that. There you go. If you put a sticker on the inside of the lid that says, Playmat available or something. If you own the game and you don't, you want to remember which ones you own a playmat for. Mm -hmm. That's an easy fix. Get a nice little sticker that you either make yourself or get, you know, and you put it on the inside of the box. A lot of playmats, though. Once I play with them, it's hard to go back. For example, yeah. Century Spice Road. Oh yeah. You know, I play with the I play with the playmat, and then I went back. I was like, wait, what is this garbage? Putting cards on the table. It it also helps you remember. Is it a row of five cards or six cards? I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Play Matt shows me. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So it's true. This is one of those stretch goals when a campaign has it where I go, all right, you think whether I want it or not, I'll consider it. I think about it sometimes, but I don't normally go for it. I don't back that many games. I normally I will if it's a board and not just a picture background. Okay. I, don't, I, I never willingly get those. Yeah, I think the last time I had that decision on my plate was when I backed Rising Sun, and I didn't get it. You didn't get the play map? No, it's just a replicate of the board. I think it I also did not board. do bigger, that, though. but I wish it's I had. It's bigger, but I, I saw it, and I was, I was perfectly happy with the board. Okay. Because it's precisely because it's smaller, you know? But what about when I bent your board? What do you mean? You haven't you opened it in a while? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, if you're watching this later, you tell us what you think about playmats. I think that's it for this episode. We'll be back tomorrow morning with a live board game breakfast, and then tomorrow, our top 10 gaming series. So we'll see you all then. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. Have a great day. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast 
or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.